Peace, brothers and sisters who have arrived here on this channel. We are in one of the highest, if not the highest, watch possibility for the rapture to happen within two weeks on the Feast of Purim, the Feast of Esther, the feast that we are waiting for Jesus to still fulfill since his first coming, the feast that uh, there is a deliverance associated with it and the feast where Pisces, the fish, the 153 fish that were caught is highlighted in the skies while the full moon will be in Virgo, the Virgin, symbolizing Esther, also symbolizing the church. So a very high rapture possibility within just two weeks of the true Feast of Purim. It is a week, I would say of Purim because it starts on the 21st of March when Esther starts her uh, without uh, starts to not eat food so she she doesn't eat food to enter the king's presence and at that time it starts and then all the way until Purim the 24th to the 25th and Sheshwan Purim the 26th so we are very in a very high watch possibility for the rapture to happen and you have been watching if you have been watching my previous videos here on my channel those that I did in English basically all of those that are appearing here they are confirmations about the Esther peering rapture so we have been receiving a lot of confirmations to a peering rapture all the way from geopolitical events to celestial events, coincidences from celestial events, more peering uh, pieces that are coming together, and also evidences from propaganda all over the world. So we have been seeing this, and we will quickly summarize this all for you in a way that it is easier for you to see and understand how strong this possibility of the rapture is so in my previous video i showed you guys here that a menorah appeared in the skies with the planets moon and stars on the 12th of march 2024 that is precisely the first day of the month of pisces the month of adar the last month of the hebrew calendar just before the first month of Nisan, the month of Aries, which changes the year for the Bible. So this is the last uh, month of the year for us, for the Bible. So like a December for us. And on the 12th of March, which is the first day of Adar, the first day of Pisces, that's when a menorah appeared in the skies in the form of planets aligning with the sun and the moon to form here seven luminaries following the sun, which is the seven churches, the seven spirits of God. And this is very, very strong because not only this was something new that we just received after many confirmations, but this is highlighting the church, highlighting the constellation of the church, which is Pisces, and highlighting here the spirits of God that will be taken into the rapture towards the throne of God. So this is very, very strong that we received this confirmation a while back and this is the cover of this video here because it's very very strong and we just passed uh, this alignment here but there's even more another part of this confirmation that you guys have seen on my previous video as well is that an asteroid called Esther this asteroid here crowns the constellation of Virgo like this in this motion here precisely in January for us, 
which was the month of Tevet, the 10th month, the month that, according to the story of Esther, she was crowned. So an asteroid called Esther crowned Virgo, the woman in the skies, exactly in the month that Esther was crowned. This is very, very strong. And it is the, the luminaries in the skies telling us the same story. If this was just an alone confirmation, it would have been already very strong. But this comes together with this confirmation here that the same identical solar and lunar eclipses that happened in the story of Esther on the year 480 before Christ, those are happening precisely on 2024 again. So the same solar and lunar eclipses happening or happened in the story of Esther are happening in 2024. Almost 2,500 years later, they are falling basically on the exact same date, on the exact same format here, for following the story of Esther. So, adding this up, we get to a very, very high possibility for the rapture because the, the, the celestial signs are pointing to Purim. And... To fulfill this even further, we know that the UN will make a pact, calling the Pact for the Future exactly on the 23rd of September 2024. It is the seven-year anniversary of the Revelation 12 sign in uh, the sign of Virgo that everybody talked about in 2017 that spread an revival in the church, online church here, to perceive the signs of the end. And precisely on the seven-year anniversary, that's when the UN will make this seven years pact, calling the pact for the future, that they will uh, add on the charter of the UN. So they will put this as a, a document that they must fulfill all the, the nations of the UN. And that's most likely the fulfillment of Daniel 9.27, where the Antichrist will make an agreement with many for seven years precisely on this date, and we know that this date here is exactly six months after Purim. And that's so strong because we have this uh, typology in the Bible where David, a type of Jesus, ruled from Hebron, the, the city of the Gentiles, for seven years and six months while the Jews in Israel, they were following another king. A false king. So David ruled from the Gentiles' land, Hebron, for six for seven years, which is the period of the tribulation, plus six months. So it is very likely that the rapture happens six months before the signing of this pact, this agreement of Daniel 9:27. And Purim is precisely on this year, seven years away, and six months away from the pact for the future. That they chose this date, the date of the seven-year anniversary of the Revelation of sign, which is even before Feast of Trumpets. So they chose this date, and this date is precisely six months after Purim. So we are have been seeing here so many confirmations that I know sometimes it is it is very hard to perceive how close we are to the rapture, even though the signs are screaming at us. Because it is impossible for the carnal mind to believe that there is more time on this earth. Our carnal mind wants to keep on believing that there are more time on this earth, even though we are seeing the signs screaming at us. The carnal man inside of us is always trying to have more time on this earth, working their best, trying to flee death, right? So the carnal man inside of each and one of us, it's impossible for the carnal mind to believe. And... Although the signs are screaming, I know sometimes how some of you guys feel as you do have that feeling that, well, maybe this is just another date that passes. But seeing what we have been seeing here, it's very, very unlikely because the sun, moon and stars are pointing, the asteroids are pointing, even the... Luminaries here, the planets are pointing the constellation, and there's even more because the geopolitical events are pointing, and Israel is also pointing because the red 
Haifer is ready to be sacrificed. So they are preparing the sacrifice of the red Haifer, which they believe will purify them, the ashes of this skull will purify them for the construction of the third temple. So the Jews are ready to receive their false messiah for now because they're still trying to sacrifice animals in order to be purified from their sins. So what is very interesting that I found out about this red heifer here is the following. So on March here on Shabbat.org exactly here on the 30th of March on this Shabbat for them that's when they read a precise part of the Bible the 20 of Adar for them here March 30 and that's when they read the details of the laws of the Red High Firm. So, this here, this Shabbat here, is a very good candidate for them to sacrifice the Red High Firm just a few days after Purim. So, imagine a rapture happen, happen, happening in Purim from the 21st all the way to the 25th or 26th, early uh, on the daytime. And then one two after three days on the fourth day they read and sacrifice the red heifer here in a preparation for the upcoming festival of passover because they don't need the red heifer on passover they just need the ashes of the red heifer for the ritual of purification on passover so very interesting that it's just after three days of the peering season there, that's when they might sacrifice the red heifer, which is ready. It cannot be delayed, otherwise they will have to wait, I don't know how many years. They have been waiting 2,000 years for this red heifer to be sacrificed. So they cannot wait anymore, otherwise it will be too old for the sacrifice. So they must do this, must do this before Passover and 30 of March is right after Purim, and that's when they read about it. That's most likely when they will do this ritual in order for have the ashes to apply on Passover. And on March the 30th, that, that's the eve of the Catholic Easter. I don't call it Passover because it's not Passover, the correct one. It's just what they call Passover. It's actually their feast of Easter here. But it is associated with uh, or supposed to be associated with Passover, of the Christ Passover. But it is on the wrong date, on the wrong season. They are calling it because of tradition of men, tradition of Catholic Church, and it's going to fall on the eve of the Easter for them. So the Catholic Church will be aligned with the Jews there on this uh, wrong date as the Jews for the sacrifice of a... An offering here of the red heifer and the Catholic will be on this Easter thinking that it is Jesus Passover but it's not and we have here that they still did not understand Christ's sacrifice that's why they are trying to be purified from their sins through uh, animals blood because they don't perceive that the son of the Most High came here to give his own blood for our purification and that's once and for all so that's why they are still trying to approach god through this uh, old rituals that was instituted in the bible so they are ready to sacrifice they are ready to bring back this third temple they are ready to bring out a new or another messiah for them that will accept those offerings but that's not going to be jesus because he was the offering and this is also a form of denial of Christ's blood. Again, that's why I believe the tribulation will come for them in order for them to perceive that animals cannot save but the blood of the Son of the Most High. So it's already, it's already here on YouTube. I found some videos, some beloved brothers and sisters sent me 
about this to take place. So we are seeing here on many places, they talking about the red heifer here about to be sacrificed and they already have it ready, have all of the things to set up. And I believe they even have uh, the land to do it. So this must happen this year. They won't have another year to wait for this. So in our case, it is even more confirmation that we must leave before this happens, before they accept another Messiah, before the Antichrist even come. So it makes a lot of sense for us to leave before Passover, which is the month before Passover, the month of Adar, the month of Pisces, the month of Purim. And there's even more. There's even more because I'll, we saw that there is an alignment of the menorah in the skies in the month of Adar, in the month of Pisces, in the month of Esther. But it's not just this alignment, guys. It is a complete, total alignment because all of the planets in the skies, all of them are aligning at this moment towards this story being played in heaven. So you can see here, all of the planets, they are here, including the sun, the moon, and Pluto, which is not a planet anymore, and also Ceres, which is a very small, not considered to be a planet as well, but it's right here on Sagittarius. So all of the celestial bodies that move around this uh, line here, all of them are agglomerated here. They are together in this story, as if they are expecting a major thing to happen around here, the constellation of Pisces, a major story to be played out. So it's like all the witnesses of the skies are watching this time frame here. They're all aligned in one side. So I, I, I made sure to do it in this form of the sky clock for you guys to see. So right now, or a couple days from uh, before today, the sun was being entering the constellation of Pisces while the moon, the new moon was sighted here in the constellation of Pisces towards the constellation of Aries. That's how we know it is the 12th month, the month of Pisces, the month of Adar. And all of the planets were like this. They are still like this. So they are all within this uh, four constellations here, which is a story being played out. And by the time we reach Purim, that's how it's going to be. So they're still going to be all around here, aligning to the constellation of Pisces and close by to see what's going to be happening. So the Feast of Purim, the Feast of Esther, it is right here when the sun is pointing Pisces and the full moon will be pointing here Virgo. That's when we can see Purim. And those are the most, the strongest watch times that we have all the way until Passover when the sun is in the middle here of the constellation of Aries. Because that's when it will be highlighting the Pisces, which is the 153 fishes that will be rescued, the church, and also Virgo, the virgin, which translates as the bride, Esther, and marriage. So very strong possibility, and all of the planets are aligning, not just the seven there, luminaries, that are making the menorah in the skies, but those that cannot be seen by the naked eye as well, they're all there, all there watching the story being unfold. So how crazy this is? How can you add more to this that is not... Uh, uh, as strong as this is because I know there are some brothers and sisters around in the internet they are looking for rapture dates on iPad go to on propaganda on the movie matrix and I don't condemn them, this them for this but to not look at peering the correct time for peering be, with with all of this alignment in the skies in the geopolitical events in the celestial bodies it is for me, a willful ignorance. Uh, they are willful ignorance of this, 
if they look at the Matrix movie, if they look at uh, the Super Bowl, if they look at old movies or propaganda or some Illuminati things in the internet, and they can take, can draw rapture dates from that, if they can draw rapture dates from that, even more strong this is because it is biblical, it is celestial, it is a perfect alignment in a pattern of events, a pattern of dates, the pattern that we know Jesus, our God, works. So, for them not to perceive, not to call out this high possibility for the rapture happening in the Feast of Purim, they are being willful, ignorant for this. So, pay attention to those that seems like they're trying to sway your attention from this high possibility because there are so many things come on the same solar and lunar eclipses in the story of esther being replayed in 2024 we saw the asteroid called esther crowning the virgo on the 10th month the month that esther is crowned we're seeing the un pact precisely six months after the peering and the menorah in the skies anybody that is not convinced that this is a real and strong possibility they are being willful ignorant and i know there are some beloved brothers and sisters they are talking about this some are saying this is not the rapture they although they are seeing all the connections they are uh they are strong enough to say that this is not the rapture all this connection is for something else which i highly doubt because we are in the year that the rapture must happen otherwise we're going to see israel rebuilding the temple or trying to rebuild the temple before even the, the holy spirit to leave this earth so so we, some people are talking about that but there are other small channels from brothers and sisters that are talking about this and i'm very glad that there are one of them is our sister from Acro Symphony here. She's talking about the connections also to the Eclipse. Good videos she's making. I'm watching them. I uh, urge you to watch as well. That's her channel. She's receiving a lot of views lately. And she's talking about a lot of confirmations as well. We know Aaron from Gone a Minute. We know this sister, True Love Light, she's making amazing videos as well. And she uh, is reaching the same time frame, the same season of Fearing. So her watch, uh, the, her watch date is the 22nd of March. Looking at, if I'm not mistaken here, the sun going through the waters of uh, Aquarius. And she's looking at this possibility here which will get the season of Purim. So she's making a lot of good videos as well. And we know Rock Island Book. I don't even need to introduce him. He's making great videos about this timeline here, which I agree. We are reaching 2024, which 2021 has got to be the second coming in the millennium. It is very hard for us to even perceive something different from this because it will... Uh, make a lot of patterns not align perfectly as this alignment here so it makes a lot of sense we studied this we agreed to the 30 a.d crucifixion we agree here to the 30 21 2031 second coming and 30 31 end of the millennium so great timeline here which i also agree so people are being aware that we are within the moment for the rapture of the church and what better moment then the feast that jesus still has yet to be to fulfill which is the feast of marriage the feast of esther the hidden one that is taken to the king of kings there a uh, type of of god so we are seeing here a very very high possibility and i'm very glad that some brothers and sisters are watching this as well and now of course this is not just it. I I know you guys mostly know all of this confirmation that I already showed you guys, besides the full planet alignment. But I also have personal confirmations here. 
personal confirmations in my own life that are also pointing to Pirin. And this one is going to make you guys uh, be very, very mind blown. So if it's all working out here, let's go to the personal confirmations about Pirin. So the first one, a sister called Luciana sent me this news and as I was reading it, I saw it. So let's go to the news. So she sent me this news here. Jerusalem Rabbi becomes a, fed, a father at the 88 years old. So 88 years old, the first thing that I perceive here, new beginnings or 888 is Jesus. So 88 years old, very interesting. And he says, like our forefather, Abraham. So Abraham in the news, because this uh, rabbi at 88 years old becomes a father. This by itself is very strong because we know we just passed the on February here the 75 years of government of Israel and by May 14 this year they will become 76 if I'm not mistaken years since their independence so we're seeing that it is 75 years old when Abraham left his father's place to go to the promised land and they just turned 75 years of government on february this year so the birth and celebrations of the rabbi and his wife is welcoming the first child has been covered by the press many rejoicing the rarity and the significance of the birth so they are expecting their messiah they're expecting this to happen and we're seeing here that they believe it's like a sign for the messiah but I wanted to see how well old was the wife of this rabbi that had this this child, right? I was thinking that possibility, the possibility of she being as old as him, and that would be a huge miracle as well. So I was reading here. Rabbi, uh, head of Jerusalem, Yeshiva, has welcomed his first child at the age of 88. Sources confirm Sunday morning. His wife, who's probably approximately 56 years old, so it's still a miracle here, is very rare. And from his second marriage, gave birth to their son at Hadassah Ein Karen Hospital. Guys, Hadassah is the name of Esther. Is the name that Esther had before becomes becoming Esther. So Hadassah is the name of Esther. So when I saw this, I was like, wow. So the, host, the name of the hospital is the name of Esther. What an amazing confirmation here for this news on Jerusalem Post. So they were talking about this since the time of the forefather Abraham. There hasn't been such a historic birth. They are regarding this as a very strong, very uh, important moment. And the bird was on the hospital called Hadassah, the name of Esther. Amazing confirmation here. Amazing confirmation for Peering as well. So Esther being here highlighted once again. Now, another confirmation for me, which is two. On my phone, I have the YouTube ver version Bible app. So I don't know if you guys have this Bible app or not, but I use the version one for a long, long time. Because this Bible app tracks how many days you've been uh, consecutively in the app. How many days you have been reading, how many days uh, one after the other. You have been on the app. And this is a screenshot of my uh, app today on the 14th of March. So 23 and 11. So 2,311 days here. Uh, streak. That I have been reading here, entering the app to read. And this here is very important for me because it is a form for me to create this app habit to read the world daily. And for me, this here uh, made have made me many confirmations uh, on time. So I have had many confirmations simply by researching the strongs number. 
associated with the number of the streaks I have on the on key dates. So on past dates, I have received confirmations from it. And I wanted to see what appears on the dates of Purim this year. So Purim, we are going to consider the 25th of March, which is the date of the lunar eclipse, the date of the full moon, the date of Purim. The 25th of March is 11 days from now, so 11 days is 23, 22, the number of streaks that will be on the time of Purim. So, let's check Strong's, Strong's twenty-three, twenty-two, and Strong's twenty-three, twenty-two is Hadasha. So wow! Oh my God! So how can you possibly? Uh, Forge or fake this. So Hadasha, which is very close to the name Hadassah of Esther. It is so close that in Portuguese, this Hadasha name here, the name of a city, considered to be a city called New, a city in Judah, only appears once in the Bible. And in Portuguese, it is even called here Hadassah. So there is no sh there so it is hadas in portuguese in english it is without the c there so there is here hadasha so very similar very close to the name of esther hadasha and that's precisely the streak dates that will be on peering on my bible app that i have been reading for the past 2322 days Wow, so this was mind blow for me, and I wanted to see uh, some more uh, strong numbers here as I was going through the the season of Esther because it's, it starts when she fasts. I remember the word now. She fasts on the twenty first, all the way until Sheshwan Purim. So she fasts on the 21st, and the Shushan Purim goes up to the, the, the 26th, the, before the, the sunset on the 26th of March. So there is like almost seven days here. That's why I wanted to check the other numbers. So Hodash, it is a new moon, a new month, also an Israelite woman. Hadash, the exactly date of the Purim here which is very close to uh, Hadassah, the Esther, Esther's name we just saw. It's also Hadassah 2322a. 2323, Hadat, new. And 2324, Hava. Guys, seriously, the little girl that is coming in April from us, the one that will be born in April, the name that I gave her is without this C, without the sun, sound of R, but it's Ava with an H in the end. So 2324 is Ava. Wow. So very, very strong for me, a personal confirmation for me in the name of my yet to be born a little girl. And the definition here is show, to show, to Ava. Amazing here. Esther and the confirmation of my child's to be born name. And in Hebrew, in Hebrew, 2322 means therapeia or therapia, which is attention, medical service, care, attention, special medical treatment, treatment. So healing, we can healing. Uh, focusing on reversal of the physical condition, illness, disease. So we itself carry the responsibility of fully serving the Lord through it. So healing, we're going to be healed from our disease, the sin, disease of sin, which we all carry, right? So very interesting here. Therapia, also 23, 21. Theophilus, the friend of God. 
uh, it, which is addressed by Luke. Theotus, deity, godhead, so the trinity. Therapia, therapeo, therapon, a servant, an attendant, a minister. I care for, I attend, I treat. I believe. Uh, yeah, 23, 25, I reap, I gather, I harvest. Wow, amazing, amazing. How could I possibly see this 2,320 days ahead when I started to uh, keep counting the streaks on the Bible app? Amazing, amazing. And it reaches to peering precisely on the name of Esther and to reap, to get harvest. Reaping, harvest, Matt. So, Terismos. Amazing confirmations here. Amazing. So, to endorse this even further, guys. As you saw here, Hadasha is the name of a city very, very close to the name of Esther before becoming Esther, Hadassah. Perhaps she was born on this town. Who knows? But this name here only appears in one place in the Bible. And this place is Joshua 15, 37. So 1537. 153 is 153 fishes that are being caught in heaven. So that's the only place in the Bible that the name Hadasha appears. And that is on Joshua 1537. 1537, that's when the name Hadasha appears here. And that's the story of Joshua. 153, the 153 fishes here. Amazing. So, of course, I had to research what is the Strong's for 1537. The Strong's for 1537, because of Joshua 1537, is Gilgal. Come on, guys. Gilgal is the place that Joshua took the Israelites after crossing the Jordan towards the Promised Land. So right after they cross the Jordan towards the Promised Land, because Moses didn't cross them towards the Promised Land, that's when Joshua crossed them and the place was called Gilgal, or Galilee. That's when... That's the Strong's for 1537. Oh my! So, Galilee, the place where... Joshua took the Israelites on the first time they crossed towards the Promised Land. Galilee is also the first miracle that Jesus performed, transforming water into wine, a symbol of the, 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 the church as well. We're going to be transformed on his miracle there of the rapture. And he transformed the, the water into wine on a marriage, on a feast of a marriage. That's his first miracle, and that was on Galilee before Passover, which is Gilgal as well. So amazing confirmations here, personal confirmations that led me to this. And 153 is the fishes, 7 is completion, so perfect completion of the 153 fishes, which is the, the church that will be taken, be caught by this. And... 1537 in Greek, it's called ek or ex. It means from or out, from out of. And we know that ex, the ex eclipse, solar eclipse of judgment that will be happening on April 8th. That's an ex eclipse forming an ex that we're going to be taken out of, from out of 1537. So I found this interesting as well. So, so many confirmations, personal confirmations to me here that I was like, wow. So, Esther is being applied. We're seeing the Joshua cross the land. We're seeing Gilgal, Galilee, the place that we're going to be arriving after we reach the promised land, 153 fish. Joshua is the one that takes us and is associated with healing to take care of, to reap all of this was already enough, but there's even more, guys. There's even more. There's even more here, and you guys are going to be 
mind blown by this as well. So, third confirmation here. Late night on March 12th, I had another gallbladder crisis. So it is a painful crisis that we that I have because of this. And although I was already medicating myself not to feel too much pain, as it happened on February for me, the pain was subsiding and then returning in the dawn. And then I had more medicine and then subsided again. And then early in the morning, I woke up to pain again. So I was feeling a pain lo much longer than I previously had. Never before I had uh, had the pain last for so long. So basically, I spent the March 13th trying to find a specialized surgeon that would perform this surgery on me as soon as possible because I'm already feeling symptoms of my gall bladder being inflamed. And that's a very serious, serious, serious uh, life-threatening disease. So a very serious life-threatening disease. It is one of the highest... Uh, that possibilities for young adults such as me because of genetics so because of genetics i have a faulty gallbladder and that's when the sludge happens the biliary sludge happens and that can clog my pancreas and that can cause uh, very serious life-threatening diseases so because of that i spend the march 13 and then take a look what happens Long story short, right? After many unsuccessful attempts of reaching the same physician that performed this surgery on my mother, see, this is genetic, and after looking for one surgeon everywhere else, so I was looking for many surgeons all around my town, the neighbor towns around here, and it was very hard to reach them because they, they, they were just having time for look at me for another weeks or months ahead so it was very hard and the one that my mother had the surgery with he was not being able to being reached by his telephone so after many hours looking one surgeon specifically answered me back saying that someone canceled their appointment exactly on that day on march 13 and i could take his place besides that he was just he was only going going to charge me one third of the full price for this appointment so not only one person gave up on their appointment canceled on that day that I was looking for i was able to fit in that place and that guy uh, only charging me for one third of the price which is exactly what i had to spend so amazing things for uh, that god was preparing here to me and what happened after that this all is an amazing preparation for god but there's even more so i was in a place I i've never been before at a time i didn't plan or chose i was talking to a person i've never met before and he saw the, the urgency on my case and scheduled me ahead of others to have this surgery on March 18. So I have a surgery to, to remove the gallbladder on March 18 there. He put me ahead of many people that had the, the scheduled this surgery as well. But because I'm feeling pain and he saw the urgency in my case, he scheduled me ahead of many people there. And after this appointment, I went to get groceries and out of nowhere guys out of nowhere my wife sees a familiar face exiting exiting the market as we were going in and this person here is a brother that is very famous here on brazil for speaking out against the the agenda of the world new world order so he spoke out against this he made many videos on the social media so much so that he was persecuted he was fined by the supreme court in brazil and because of that he disappeared from all social media and it's been almost like a year so he totally disappeared and out of nowhere this brother was there exiting the market at the market as we were going in and my wife saw him 
So just just look how unlikely this is. Brazil is like a huge country. It's like the top five largest countries in the world. For an example, Brazil is larger than the US if you do not count um, Alaska. So it's a very large country. And my town here has about 150,000 people living in it. So this guy here, this brother, who disappeared from social media a while back, suddenly not only was in my hometown, but he was exactly exiting the same market at the same time as we were going in. And I was on a schedule that I had no control over whatsoever because it was the first time I met this physician, the first time I was in his office, the first time he spoke to me, he spent the time with me there. To meet this person here, it's completely crazy. Like sort of like finding Dr. Barry All in one of your small towns in Texas kind of a deal. It was very crazy to find this person here. And if I was just a few seconds faster or slower than I was in that day, I might not have encountered him. But it happened. This encounter happened. And what's more interesting than all of this is that his name is not a, a common name in Brazil. And his name is called Esdras or Ezra in English. In Portuguese it's Esdras, but in English it's Ezra. And once I got home, I wanted to check, right? Because it has been it had been a, an incredible chain of events leading me to this person, leading me to this, his name. And imagine the look on my face when I researched about Ezra or Esdras. So the name Esdras, which is translated as Ezra in English, appears for the first time in the Bible on Ezra 7, chapter 1, when Ezra goes to Jerusalem. And take a look. After these things, during the reign of Artaxerxes, the king of Persia, guys, Artaxerxes is the king that marries Esther. How can you possibly create such an incredible thing like this so this guy's name this brother's name is Esdras I found him exact exactly at the same time on my hometown on the same market there are many markets like many Walmarts in, in my town here he was in the same place at the same time his name is Ezra and the first time that Ezra is mentioned in the Bible is during the reign of Artaxerxes, the king of Persia, which is the, the king that marries Esther. Come on, this is just this is just too much for me. This was this was like I, I had to leave the computer after this because it was just too much. It is insane if you think about it. It is not possible for anybody to just simply create this situation this guy who left who disappeared from social media was there in all my town in that place in that hour in that moment and his name is a biblical name not a common name which appears when the king the mary's esther appears so this is totally insane for me and i had basically three confirmations in my personal life about Esther, about Hadassah, about Hadassah, the name of Esther, about the king of Esther, Artaxerxes, and I'm, I'm convinced, guys. I'm very convinced. I, I couldn't be more convinced. So wrapping up, I'm very convinced that indeed the rapture is just around the corner on the next full moon, which is at the Esther eclipse. We, I received too many confirmations everywhere from the skies, geopolitical events. Since last year, I've been talking about this possibility. And my personal life here is even uh, stronger confirmations than I could possibly imagine or ask for. So I'm really hoping that you guys believe this, even though we have this carnal mind inside of us, living within us, that doesn't want to believe because it wants to live on this earth. Uh, 
I ask you to pray and lift up your spirits because we are seeing the end of it. We are wrapping this up because everything is ready for us to leave. And the feast of Purim is indeed the last feast of the year and the last feast that Jesus has to fulfill. It is considered to be a marriage. Esther means to hide or hidden. And it has everything to do with this. I'm very sorry for the brothers and sisters around the internet who cannot perceive this because it's just beautifully amazing. This, the confirmations are so much I couldn't even believe on my own personal life. And I'm very sorry for those that are being willful, ignorant, not looking at such an amazing time frame as this. Also, uh, on March 10th was the, my son's first birthday here. So this is a small picture that I took. That's our family here. He had his first birthday and I believe his last birthday on Earth because we're living. But on March 18th, that's going to be my surgery. So please, guys, pray for me. I really want to be here by the rapture and not be resurrected. So uh, pray for me that everything goes well, that I might be with you guys in the rapture very soon because i believe on march around march 25th the rapture should happen on the feast of Purim. should be on the 21st 22nd possibly that's when esther started to fast on the 23rd 24th possibly as well or on the 25th all the way into the 26th that's when the time frame that we have to expect the rapture of the church earlier uh, right in the middle or uh in the late hours there that's our possibility for the rapture of the church. So please pray for me. Pray that this goes well. Pray that we're going to all be together in the rapture very, very soon. I'm really feeling like this. I've been on the internet doing videos for the past seven years. And I never have seen such an amazing alignment like those we are seeing right now. So blessed are those that watched this video, that understood this video, they're also watching, hyped for this possibility because we're seeing amazing moments that may just lead us towards the rapture. And uh, honestly, this has got to be it because everything is set up. Even the geopolitical events, even the UN is marking a pact for the future to enter the charter of the UN exactly six months after this. So everything is aligned, everything is correct, everything things fit even on our my own personal life so guys be prepared be ready we might just be within two weeks of the rapture i'm really hoping that it is earlier the 21st perhaps 22nd or if it's not on the 24th or 25th that might just be it and i'm really hoping to see all of you guys there because you guys have been here with us as well following watching believing spreading the message and this is just beautiful for god beautiful for the body of the christ beautiful for the church that has been uh, watching for the past seven years so i pray that this is it maranatha i hope to see you guys very very soon in the kingdom of our beloved god and savior jesus christ yahusha hamashiach maranatha God bless each and every one of you guys and keep you until the hour of redemption. Amen. Maranatha, guys. Maranatha.